Hello Internet, Zach here, and welcome back to Collecting the Elements. There's an old saying that goes, one person's trash is another person's treasure. And that's definitely true in this episode. See, a couple of months ago, I discovered some solar-powered garden lights that were just tossed aside and discarded on the side of the road. And I figured I'd bring them home and see if they still work. Well, I finally got around to trying them out a couple of weeks ago. Found out one works, two of them don't. So the two that didn't work, I took apart, naturally, to see if maybe I could fix them or find useful pieces inside. Well, I did find useful pieces inside. Instead of the normal nickel metal hydride batteries that they normally put in garden lights, these had the old-fashioned nickel cadmium batteries. And since I was in need of a zero-budget episode, it looked like the serendipity of the universe did me a big favor, mostly. See, my research on the internet made me think that this would be really easy, like extracting lithium foil from a lithium battery. It looked like there was going to be a piece of cadmium foil in the nickel cadmium battery that I could just unroll, shove it in a test tube, seal it up, and be done with it. Easy. Not so fast. That's not actually how they're made. You'll see. I ended up having to electro-refine the metal, which means that you get to see me grow metal crystals in this episode. So anyway, as for the properties of element 48, cadmium, it's a soft, silvery metal with a slight bluish tinge. It has a very low melting point, like the other members of its group, uh, 610 degrees Fahrenheit. Forgive me, I don't know what that is in Celsius off the top of my head. Um, like zinc and mercury, it also has a very high vapor pressure when it's melted, which is why I ultimately did not melt the metal down into a solid bead. And despite being a toxic heavy metal, it's tremendously useful, not only in things like nickel cadmium batteries, but also in paint pigments such as the famous cadmium yellow and cadmium red, cadmium yellow being cadmium sulfide, which is also used in light sensors, like the ones that turn streetlights on at dusk and off at dawn. Um, cadmium telluride is used in high-efficiency solar panels that are actually cheaper to produce than silicon solar panels. And despite cadmium being a heavy metal, they actually end up ultimately being better for the environment than the silicon panels. Go figure, right? Also, cadmium was historically used as a corrosion-resistant plating on steel, and one of cadmium's spectral lines was used from 1921 until 1960 to define the meter. Anyway, enough talk though, let's get on with the chemistry. So here are the batteries that came out of the little solar-powered lights. And what I think happened is that the solar panels on these stopped working and stopped charging the batteries. So because of how the chemistry of uh, nickel cadmium batteries works, I charged these up before I take them apart because that'll make as much cadmium metal as possible. So the next step is to take these apart. So first is the outer plastic shell. So I took apart the first battery off camera. I found out things were not as the internet told me they would be. So I'm going to take this one apart on camera and show you what I discovered. Alright, now to explain what's going on here. This rolled up thing here 
is the negative electrode. That's the part that contains the metallic cadmium as well as cadmium hydroxide. This inner positive part contains nickel and other nickel compounds. So this is the part that I'm interested in. Now I found out that this perforated metal grid that's all inside of here is not actually cadmium metal, but some other metal that sticks strongly to a magnet. Definitely not what I'm looking for. So I found out the way I'm going to have to go about getting the cadmium off of this is to electro-refine it. So first I'm going to uncoil this. And what I have in here is hydrochloric acid that I've dissolved the uh, cadmium hydroxide from the other battery into. And this here that fell off of that electrode I'll put into the solution. And what'll happen is both the cadmium and the cadmium hydroxide will dissolve in the hydrochloric acid to produce cadmium chloride. And from that, I can electroplate out cadmium metal, as I've done here. So let's take this and put this in a container. That'll be the first of the cadmium metal. And that's really crumbly. A lot like when I made uh, copper crystals that one time. So we're going to connect the cadmium and cadmium hydroxide electrode here up to the battery. And here I have an ordinary D battery. Positive electrode to the uh, cadmium electrode from the battery. Negative electrode to a graphite rod. I'm going to immerse the graphite rod in the solution. And gradually crystals of cadmium metal will grow on this electrode. Okay, it's barely been two minutes. And that's the new growth of metal already. One of the things I'm going to do to try to make this process work a little better. Hang on. See the acid's already taken most of the cadmium off of here. So I'm going to flip this the other way. Get that end into the solution. Put this electrode back in. And do the electro refining thing a little more. Really crazy cadmium crystals. Alright, so it's time to take the cadmium out of here and shave it. Just like when I electro-refined tin, it's just kind of plating out these spongy crystals that don't hold together when I pull them out of solution. So from time to time I shave them off the electrode, and I squeeze the solution out. Put that back in to grow some more, and take these and squish the solution out of them. And put the solution back in here. And that's the cadmium I've collected so far. 
I'm just going to keep uh, repeating this process, shaving the crystals off, squishing them down until the uh, electrolytic cell here stops producing more cadmium. Okay, this is like round five or six, I think, but it's time to shave the cadmium again. I'm just going to take this magnet and make sure I'm not attracting bits of the magnetic metal framework that this was stuck to inside the battery. Uh, checking on the electrode. That stripped most of the cadmium off the electrode. So I'm going to rotate this a bit before I put it back in the solution. Just like with tin, you get really neat looking crystals as long as they're in the solution. But as soon as you pull them out, they collapse. Alright, I'm at a point where the anode has disintegrated. Which means this is all the cadmium I'm going to get until I put a new anode in. And I'm going to fish the pieces of the old anode out. And I'm going to use a piece of scrap copper here as the new anode. And what I'm hoping is that this will push any remaining cadmium out of solution before it starts uh, pushing copper out of solution. And I'll know the point where the transition happens because the metal will change color. So, it should plate, it should continue plating pure cadmium onto the cathode until the copper concentration gets high enough that the copper starts coming over at which point it'll be plating over basically cadmium bronze and that'll have a distinctly non-silver color. It'll either be yellowish or reddish. So I'm gonna let this sit here and do its thing and see what happens. Alright, rather than changing color and beginning to plate out cadmium bronze, it appears that uh metal has just stopped being plated at all. So this appears to be the end of the electro-refining part of this experiment. So the next step is going to be to take this outside and melt it down. Well, this is about as good as it's going to get. Now, this might catch the light a little bit and sparkle, because it is still somewhat crystalline. Trying to melt it absolutely failed, and I didn't want to deal with uh, cadmium vapor, so... This is what's going into the test tube. Uh, sadly, it's not much, and I really had hoped to uh, melt it down at least into some nice little metal beads, but this is the best I'm going to do for now. And there it is. 
two batteries worth of cadmium taken out of the environment and sealed under glass where it's not going to hurt anybody. So, if you liked this video, hit the like button. If you know someone else who would like it, hit share. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. And if you'd like to help me have enough rubber gloves that I can replace the ones that rip, <laughs> throw me a few coins on Patreon. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.